Hey there guys and welcome back. So today we are doing another review and as you can see by the box in front of us and the title we're going to be looking at this. Now this is the Tornado the Special Edition. Now I've had this for a couple of years and I was wondering whether it would still be alright to review like older models and stuff. Um, but when I've been doing my research, I found that models, especially like this, are more than readily available, um, like sort of second hand in shops, like sort of places like eBay, things like that. So do you know what? I thought, let's get this model out because it is an absolute fantastic model and let's have a look at it. So, as you can see by this model, we get a lovely outer sleeve. And as you can see there on this one, what makes this model a bit extra special is that it's a limited production. Now, for me, with certain models, if I can find one like this at a good price, I do like to try and get them because it just makes it, you know, that little bit more special. So let's look at the rest of the packaging when we take that away. And because this is a little bit of an older model, you've not got that, um, try and get the camera light out of the way. You don't have that classic block of ice. This is just like a hard um, polystyrene, but it does have a plastic cover. Uh, now this isn't a manual, this is something else which I will tell you about a little bit later on. Um, but it's kept the model perfectly fine, perfectly well when I bought it, because I did get this off eBay. Um, it was, you know, it wasn't damaged in any way, shape or form. And let's just quickly show you the end of the box so you can see what it is. And also it just helps you to look if you want to find the product code. Price wise, so at the time when I got this, um, this was around about between 90 and 100 pounds. Now I have had a look, there are people still selling these like sort of online on uh, places like of eBay. I've even seen a couple of second-hand ones in shops. Um, I don't want to say about price because obviously if you're going through an auction it can vary. You know, whatever shop you buy it from, whatever condition it is, can also vary as well. But the version where I got was described as new. It's arrived in an absolutely pristine condition when I got it. Oh. With that being said, let's get the box out of the way and let's have a look at the actual loco itself. So here it is and here we have the model out of the box. Now I will go off and say straight away that when you get this, the tender isn't permanently coupled to the locomotive. But because I have modified this slightly, and by say modify I mean that I fitted my own uh, sound to go in this model then the way I have the wires this was the first model I've ever, I would, I'd ever had a go at so yeah it wasn't the best but it I have to keep it like permanently attached but as you can see from the it does come away so let's get into the actual model and the details and I will tell you now this is such a brilliantly detailed model so to start off with you've got your separately fitted rails down the side if you put your finger onto this you can feel that these are cold so to me that's saying that these are actually brass fitted whistles which is such an absolute lovely lovely touch now on this you don't get a sliding roof vent but there are holes in the roof so working down to the side now one thing i did notice with this when I did get it, and if you guys have these, let me know. There's no actual windows fitting into these. And that's on this side, or I'm trying to be careful, or this side either. So I'd be interested to know if that is with, uh, you know, fitting with the real life version of this. Sorry, I'm just trying to juggle that tender cause with the fitting on it. So let's work our way around. You've got some absolutely lovely gorgeous lining all the way down the side you've got the number of the engine you've got the small stamp which I can't get my camera close enough but you can actually if you get right up close to this you can make out some 
uh, numbers and writing on this which is a really great touch like I said the camera what I'm using for film with uh, especially at the minute it just hasn't got that um, that kind of that close-up macro style lens that you would need to see these properly but we've got a warning sticker on the boiler you've got all this extra little indented detail and look at the lining on these wheels that is just such a brilliant brilliant touch which really adds that bit of extra to the locomotive you've got the wind deflectors on the front <laughs> this is really difficult to have juggle this tender uh, you've got some great separately fitted little part on the front there you've got your running number and what looks to me like they've tried to make that some form of a light but it is just painted gold so it's kind of not the the best way to do that if that that's if that's what it's intended you've got the double chimney stack up top and when you look at the paintwork on this model this is so nicely done you can't see any form of a crease line on this and that is just really really nice and then working forward let's have a look now with this one we don't get the sprung buffers but for me they are a absolutely wonderful added little touch but when you're coupling up with these type of connections they don't really for me fit like a, a purpose of use unless some people find you know a way to make these you know more realistic to actually use them coupling up if you can do that then fantastic but for the purpose of this video this just doesn't have uh, sprung buffers you've got your coupling iron on the front you've got some great just trying to get this in shot you've got some great little detail down here again you've got a couple more warning signs and then let's get to the fun bit let me try and show you oh in fact sorry before i do that let's try and get this out of the way and let's show you the cab now fortunately look at that there is there is a lot of molded detail but there's no actual detail like painted picked out this all looks like it's molded and not separately fitted and with a new and more expensive loco obviously you know you would expect more detail in there and quite more than likely it's you know at least some of it would be painted which would give it an extra touch but to those who are really good with paint that could be a fun little project uh, to see what you can pick out for yourself so that would be like you know a great little thing to try out but having said that there is no painted detail inside here but when we move the tender around look at this you've got painted dials you've got um i think sorry i think that is just molded in we've got like a little separately fitted box up there you've got all these painted dials so i do wonder a little bit why they have done this part and not this part in here but anyway you know that's how it's come it doesn't um take anything away from the model and it still looks fantastic and again when we get onto the tender you've got all that wonderful lining on the side of the tender going around to the back again there's no sprung buffers and we'll go right round to the back you've got the warning on all of the little steps now fortunately there isn't anything separately fitted with those little bars at the back and again this looks like they've tried to create some form of like a, a lighting effect and then you do have the coupling iron at the back so we'll just set this down and we'll just flip this over just trying to be as gentle as I can here oh he says while it's clashing and banging around now with this there wasn't any brake rigging fitted and it wasn't actually included with this one that I got so if you guys have one and it was included in with the packaging let me know but with this particular model there isn't any fitted and that's perfectly okay with me 
but um, you may be able to, to find some rigging uh, what can be fitted. But yeah, I can't fully remember whether there's actually some. I do have the packaging. I couldn't see any in it, but at the time, again, I just couldn't remember. And again, if I just pop this on its side, we have just a nice little shot of that detail. Just the, and yes, I know the front of that tender came up. That was actually, unfortunately, that was my doing. That was a mistake on my part. But the tender was like fitted perfectly fine. But again, that is because I have made a modification to it. So yeah, I was a little bit disappointed when I did that. But the tender, or the uh, case on the tender, if you will, is secure. And it does look really, really lovely as it is. And that is a actual wonderful, and this is, I probably say this about quite a lot of my models, but this is one of my absolute favorites for my railway. So there we have the model and all the details. Now then, let's have a look at the features that go with this model. Right, so let's flip this back over again, making a wonderful amount of noise, what you are probably cringing at, but let's have a look at it anyway. Now, feature with this, that I, I think that especially going off the, I mean, I understand this is an older model, but going off the, um, how amazing the new uh, Dapol uh, kinematic, kinematic coupling, I think it is. I still can't get that word right. Is uh, and how brilliant that is as a connection. I'm not really keen on this little bar. It, for me, it could be so easily bent or broken, and you've just got the little piece of molded plastic there, which, although it is out the way, I mean, yeah, it 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 works. It does exactly what it needs to, but it's just not my most favourite way of coupling. You go to the back. We have the NEM couplings, and if, as you can see, this one is quite easily removable. So if this were to break for any reason, then you can get another one, and it'll just slot straight in there, which is a great little add-on. And if we go to the front, again, we have another, while well, it's just got stuck, another NEM coupling. Let me just turn this over. Now that is a clip one that just pushes straight into the socket. So again, if this does get damaged, you can replace it nice and easily. And I will say one thing with this model as well, um, because there is no permanent wide connection to the tender, that means unfortunately there are no pickups on the back. So this model just picks up on these driving wheels solely. So, that is a little bit of shame, but again, it just seems to go with models, you know, with this type of coupling if they are wired up to the tender, which you probably find with some older models anyway. But I can show you this model, it doesn't lose any performance, as you'll see on the railway as it is. We're not quite finished here because with this being a special edition, um, as well, there is, now I'm not sure if this is just because it's a special edition, um, but we will have a look at these and you get a little bag to go with this with the and these are actually let's have a look at the back yes as you can see with the shine on that with the camera these are metal etched nameplates so that is a great little thing and I've not done it so far but I am kind of curious to possibly try and fit these at some point because I think these will look really nice on this so I think that will be on my to-do list but yeah, so that is a great little add-on. So there is the model with the details and some of the features to go with this. So we'll take this to one side and we'll have a look at the manual because this is the nice little part for me as well. Okay, so let's have a look at that manual. And as you can see, it is Hornby's classic, just your piece of paper. It has got your the information for your lubrication points. Um, it's got 
couple of accessories what you can fit and it also shows you on this which um, I did forget to mention you have this for your close coupling now this tends to be um, more used for if you're just displaying the model rather than running it but uh, for me I just fit it on the the, the furthest one away just to make sure I've got that clearance but you do have that option available and as you can see in this picture it shows you where the board is fitted inside the loco so as you can see um, when I've uh, fitted the sound I've had to put everything here and then run it all the way down the back which um, yeah that was a little bit tricky but I didn't sew it on the model obviously because I tend not to take the bodies off and stuff as I where I can but because I did have to take this body off for fitting the sound it does have a whopping great fly wheel and that really really does make such a difference to it running and that is everything to go with that and as you can see the brake rods there now it's same part of the accessory pack so I did have a bit of a clear out and a tidy up of my boxes and everything about a month ago so it's highly likely that I do have this somewhere so yeah I'll have to go hunting for that but again it's not fitted on the loco uh, like quite a lot of more modern ones are but you've still got it there as a feature now this is the nice little part for me and this is why I sometimes like finding um, like the limited edition models is that you get this with it so as you can see it's a limited edition of 1200 and this is to certify that my model is number 1099 so I'm assuming like the higher that number if you get say one of the first 10 that's made it it may be you know, more valuable but something like this for me it just makes it or makes the model just that extra little bit um, special uh, when you're running it so that is a great little thing so I think we've covered everything there so we'll pop that down and let's get this on the railway now it will be a little bit different because it's I'll be do, using this on digital but let's have a look at this running moving and then we'll pop some coaches behind it and I will show you a little bit of the sound to go with this as well and here it is down on the railway. Now, I will apologize for one thing. If you hear some clicking around and stuff like that in the background, it's not me doing something else. It's because I'm having to use my digital Hornby Select controller for this because I don't have like a, a different controller. This is what I use for all of my digital models. So I'm going like a remote control to try and hold it to one side to uh, to so I make as little noise as I can. So let's have a look at this crawling. Let's see how slow we can get it to move. So just turn the control slowly. Let's see, I can hear something. There we go. As you can see, that is wonderfully nice and smooth. Let's just see how far I can turn this down. Yeah, that's, that's about all we're going to get out of this one. Um, now that is sometimes, I mean, I don't know if it's my controller, but that is sometimes a downside of digital, where if I had this on my analog controller, which I did used to in the past, I can get this moving. So you absolutely hardly notice that the wheels are turning. It's such an incredible car, um, corner crawler on analog. But... Um, so yeah, so unfortunately, because I've got it on digital, it's just one of those things, but it's such a nice, smooth runner. So let's just turn that controller up a little bit and let's see which way it's going to go. As you can see, it is such, just turn that straight up a little bit, such a nice, smooth, quiet runner. It really is so like you know it's, it's just brilliant what you can buy um even as a second hand model it really does um you know it, it really does do like the, the budget modeler you know it it does them some good being able to get great models at a second hand price um 
but let's do I tell you what let's um yeah go on let's put some sound on this so you, so you can hear what this is like now I've just fitted this with the um Hornby um TTS now I'm not sure with the sound on this if you may have to turn your volume down because I don't know how loud this is going to come out on camera going to do we're just going to show you a couple of i'm not going to do like a, a full run through of all the sounds and everything because this isn't like you know it's, just, it's not a sound video it's just a local review and i'll see the sound is something that i've fitted extra after i've got the model so let's just do a couple so let's put so that's like your idling sounds and let's hear one of the whistles yeah that does sound pretty good <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I don't know how loud that's going to come through on camera. So if this bit is really loud, then I do apologise. So let's have a look at it moving off a little bit. Let's see, going, let's try and get it going a little bit quicker on this one. So yeah, so that sounds great. So that's the model and everything moving. So what we'll do, we'll put some coaches on this. We'll pop the sound back on as we send it out for its first little run. And then, yeah, we'll show a bit of video of it running around. We'll pop something else on with it as well. Um, I'm thinking maybe it is a very old model, but I'm thinking it would be quite appropriate to put the Flying Scotsman on with this. I think that would be like a really nice little touch to go with this uh, with this logo. And then we'll do a little bit of a summary to finish off. So let's get that all set up and then let's get them running. So there we have it sat in the station with a lovely small rake of Pullmans on the back. Obviously you can size my stations. Three, maybe four is about the maximum I can do. I'd love to run like more but obviously just space with the layout and with the size of them if we come over here we can see we have the flying scotsman ready and waiting to join it as normal we have the mysterious fallen town tree which you can stay there so we have the sound on it's all steamed up and let's hear this coming out of the station for the first time And there she is, we'll follow her into the tunnel. And there she goes anyway. So here it is all back in the siding and for me it's just a nice little touch having the Flying Scotsman uh, with it. Although that one is an analogue, don't worry, I've, I've done something so it won't be touching the track so it's okay. But yeah, this is an absolute fantastic model if you can find it. There's such a good little bit of detail, especially obviously because it's mainly the outside what you see as it's going around the track. It's got such a great amount of detail there. And it really, really does look good. It runs fantastic on analog as well as digital. And again, this is just such a wonderful model to have in the collection. So with that being said, um, give me a thumbs up in the video below. Hit that subscribe button, which 
again, so many have done recently and I've been absolutely amazed by, you know, I'm made up with everyone that has. So again, thank you so very much for doing that. And with that being said, oh. right, all right, you can go back out in a minute. Hang on, J just give me a second. Right, so with that being said, we shall see you in the next video.